This morning, I'd like to talk to you about slow poison. As you know, we are chemical factories. Chemical factories living in pain factory. The pain factory is this solar system, this earth as we know it. The chemical factory is your body. But there's more than that. There's also a chemistry to your psychology. You're also a psychological chemical factory. What are you talking about now? You can't prove that. Well, I don't have to prove it because medical science has proved it for me. Certain emotional states, which are psychological, trigger and release certain chemicals in the body. Oh, okay. Well, as long as the doctors said that it's that way, then we'll accept it. And that's our problem. We'll accept it, but we won't test it ourselves. We'll accept it because an authority said so. That's a mistake. That's nothing but a belief. It's a belief system. You don't need more beliefs. You need more verification of what's so. The work speaks much of self-observation. It's really the cornerstone of the work. It's easy to imagine that we know what it is after reading the books, listening to the lectures. Perfect example is the email I got from the guy who read the books, listened to the lectures, listened to the podcast, and was faithful about all that. But then when it came down to actually doing it, he found that it was not the same thing, that where most of it had resided was in his intellect, but not in his actual experience and in his ability to do something with it. It's no good trying to observe yourself without rhyme or reason. You see, this guy on the East Coast was fine until he heard me talk about a 10-day meditation course, because then it sounded fine. It's like, wow, 10-day meditation course. Wow, I'm going to do that. He was fine. Oh, he had all of the resistance. Oh, man, I don't know if I can do 10 days. I don't, you know, they, they, you're not allowed to talk on cell phones. You know, you're not allowed to talk to each other. You're not allowed to, you know, you got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and, and you got to go and do this, and you got to go and do that, and you got to, they, they feed you, and you can't have any meat. You can't bring any food back to your room. You can't go off the grounds and go get a hamburger. You can't go get a beer and a pizza somewhere if you had enough. You can't do it the way you want to do it, the way you do your life. Somebody else has already made up some rules and you have to agree to them. There's a huge amount of resistance. How many people even sign up for one of those courses after they find that out? <laughs> okay, well, let's take a look. How many people are there on the planet? Okay, a lot more than sign up for the course. I rest my case. Now, how many people to sign up for the course actually go to it? Well, not all of them, okay? Just to say not all of them. Not all the people who sign up end up going. Okay, of all the people who sign up and then end up going, how many people are there on the last day? Well, let me say again, not all of them. I'm not interested in statistics. I'll just say not all of them. How many people at the end of the 10 days who are there, who signed up, got there, stayed there, finished it, got what the course was about? Well, again, let me just say not all of them. How do I know that? Well, because I signed up, I went there, I did it, I finished it, and then I did it again. And the second time I did it, I said, oh, this isn't the way it was the first time. They must have changed something when they actually hadn't changed a thing. I just got more. Then the third time, I got more. Then the fourth time, I got more. Well, I could probably go back 10,000 times and get more every time, or I couldn't. And what would that be a function of? It would be a function of me, not the course. It would be a function of me and my ability to take in new impressions, to assimilate them, and to transform them into higher energies, and thereby reconnect and heal this broken machine. So it's no good trying to observe yourself without rhyme or reason. To be effective, self-observation has to be directed and classified by what the work teaches. Well, wait a second. You're saying that the work's the only way for anybody to observe themselves? No. I'm saying it's the way that we're doing it. There may be a thousand other ways, and they may all be good ways. What are you going to do? Are you going to spend the rest of your life looking for good ways, or are you going to pick one and do it? This is about picking one and doing it. This isn't about finding the best way. There is no best way. There is the way that you're doing it. That's it. That's the best way. The way you're doing it is the best way. There was a story I heard years ago about this guy who was traveling. He had this backpack. It was just like all lumpy and falling apart. It had things poking in his back and padding was worn away. It was just awful. Just getting sores and blisters and was rubbing him raw. And he got to this way station kind of thing, hotel, you know, up in the mountains. 
gets into this room and there's all these backpacks. And he, the guy who runs the hotel says, oh, just take your backpack and take it off, put it over there. And we'll watch it, make sure everything's fine. The guy said, okay, and he did. The guy went and he, you know, ate and he showered and took a bath and all the things that people do. And, and then he slept and he was refreshed and he came back and he got to the room and he said, well, where's my backpack? And, and the guy who was watching him says, well, it doesn't matter. Just pick anyone you like. I know that your other backpack was all broken down and causing you a lot of pain and suffering and was too heavy and it was cutting into you and its padding was bad and all that. So pick anyone you want. Take anyone you want. Find a brand new one. Take that. Find a really light one. Take that. So the guy was just delighted. This is like, well, yeah, baby, this is the place I've been looking for. So he goes around and he's picking up all these New, oh, this one's nice and light, and he puts that on. He walks around with it a little bit, and he puts that down. He picks up another one. And this one's a little heavier. I think I could handle this. And he puts that on, and he tries all these different. Well, this one feels good. This one feels bad. And this one's great, and this one's not. And this one's the right color, and this one's the wrong color. And he finally picks up a backpack, and he gets it on. And he walks around with it for a little bit. And uh, he says, okay, I think this is the one I want. And he said, well, can I have this one? To the guy, and he said, I told you, you can have anyone you want. He says, okay, I want this one. That other one was horrible. I never want to see that one again. So out the door, the guy goes. And another guy comes up to the guy who's watching the backpacks, and he says, there's something I don't understand, sir. And he said, what's that? He said, that guy just left with the exact same backpack that he came in with. And that's the moral to the story. What you got is what is yours. And that's what you have to work with. That's your burden. That's what you have to carry. That's what you have to learn to deal with. To try and change that is counterproductive. Not only can you not change it, you will find that after a long time of inactivity and not making any progress, you will end up choosing it again. But you will have wasted all the time that you could have been making progress. And that's not a good idea. As most of you know, or at least some of you know, it looks like a good idea when we first see it. But then if we try it, it wasn't such a good idea at all. Have you observed your typical forms of internal consideration? Did you think someone should have treated you differently? This is a form of internal considering. Internal considering is taking poison. Internal considering is drinking poison. Internal considering is ingesting poison. I don't know how else to say this. Internal considering is ingesting poison into yourself. Poison is not good for you. It's not good for your life form. Don't ingest poison. This is a form of internal considering called making accounts, feeling you're owed, feeling that you're not properly treated, feeling that your special value, your unique value isn't appreciated here, that you have to be somewhere else where your unique value, where your specialness is really appreciated. Sound familiar? Good. Then you've been observing yourself. All these are specific formulations of poison that we drink. See, we're very creative about our poisons. You know, alcohol is poison to the body. How many different kinds of alcoholic drinks are there? Ever heard of a zombie? Gimlet? Martini? It goes on and on and on. And people are inventing new ones all the time. Have you ever seen a bartender's guide? They're getting thicker. But it's poison. It destroys brain cells. It dehydrates the body. It is doing all kinds of harmful things to the body. And people are lining up to imbibe. There's something wrong with this picture. Now, am I saying that people shouldn't drink? No. I'm simply using this as an example of how we poison ourselves. Willingly. Happily. And not only that, have you ever bought alcohol lately? It's expensive. You know, they got some bottles of wine that cost thousands of dollars. Well, you're looking at me like I have two heads. No, I'm not. I'm serious. They have bottles of wine that cost thousands of dollars. Champagne that costs hundreds of dollars for a bottle. They have single malt liquors. Very expensive. The main ingredient is alcohol. Poison. I want some of that. That's some prize poison, that is. I want some of that. Such forms of internal consideration always lead to negative states. Are you ready for more? Are you waiting for your teacher to move on to higher teachings of the work for you? Are you bored? If you take a good look at it, you'll see that all of those things have come up in you because it's how we are. This is taking poison. It's internal consideration. I'm ready for more. I am more evolved. I'm higher 
in consciousness than that. My level of being is much higher than this. I'm wasting my time here. These people aren't evolved enough for me. They're dragging me down. They're holding me back. These people don't understand the things that I understand. That's internal consideration. We expect too much. The work says it this way. We make too many requirements in life. It's a work phrase. We make too many requirements in life. What that means in plain English is we expect too much. And that is where internal considering comes from. You know that people who make many requirements are very difficult. Do you know how difficult you are? No, you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't be the way you are. If you could see the way you are, you would be working to change it. How hard? Very hard. But just like our friend back on the East Coast who had no idea what he was dealing with, how crazy and strong and wild the elephant was, just what he was up against, as he put it. He had no idea. He'd never really observed himself. Not really. He'd never really observed himself in the kind of a situation that brought up such stark contrasts. And so we press for extreme situations. Today's a work day. I don't want to work today. I put out a lot of energy in the morning. I want to go rest. I don't want to work. It puts me right into an extreme situation. The work loves that. False personality hates that. So what does the work say? Well, do what false personality doesn't like. Why do you say things like that? Just irritate you. All the work is just to irritate you because the grain of sand causes the oyster great pain. But if you want that pearl, then you go through the pain and you learn how to perceive it in a different way so that it's not pain. You turn useless, unnecessary suffering into intentional suffering and you transform your being into a higher level. You transform your machine into a machine of a higher order, able to do things that this machine cannot do. That's why we're here. So do you know what kind of a person you are? The work makes certain requirements, but this is different. Dr. Nicole said, I may get angry with a person in the work, not because of mechanical internal considering, but because this person is not treating the work rightly, not properly evaluating the work. We don't accept many excuses from our teachers like that, because we know that if we were saying that, we would be lying. Therefore, he must be lying, because we just can't see very high above us. And you've got to believe that higher levels are possible, or you can't do this work. You can't believe higher levels are possible. You can't do this work. There's nowhere to go. There's a glass ceiling right there. Actually, it's not even glass, it's concrete. There's a ceiling right there. You can't get any higher or not much higher than where you are now. If you lie to your teacher and he's angry with you, whether it's expressed or not expressed, it's not from a personal feeling, a mechanical internal consideration. It's his feeling for the work itself. What Maurice de Coles was saying is, yeah, he got angry with people. But what people didn't understand is he didn't care about them personally, what they were doing personally. His life was the work. People whose life isn't the work, they can't understand that. How could they understand that? That's not what their life is. That's not their life experience. They can't ex understand that. Well, that's okay for him. He's different. It's okay for him, but, but that's not my way. I'm glad you found something that's beneficial for you, but that's not my way. Right. Someone unwilling to lay flowers at his teacher's feet can have no teacher. He needs to work on pride and vanity before he can make room for a teacher. No teacher, no teaching. You cannot have a teaching without a teacher. Well, it's all in the books. I can read the books. I can listen to lectures or videos. I... You have no teacher, you have no teaching. If you are your teacher, what you can be counted on to do is to teach yourself to be what you are. And just in case you missed it, if you ever observed yourself and saw what you actually are, that is the one thing you do not want to be. You don't want to be what you are because what you are is a very difficult person because you make far too many requirements, you place far too many requirements on life. They're too noisy, make them stop. That's uncomfortable, change position. I don't like that, stop it. I don't eat those things. I don't drink that, it tastes icky to me. I don't want this, I don't want... All those things are requirements. Well, you're acting like that means something. Yes, I am, that's right. Because for me, everything means something. And your job is to take the things that mean nothing to you now and find a new, higher meaning for them, a work meaning. That's your job. If you're not doing that, you're not doing your job. A man who lies to his teacher lies to the work and cuts himself off from help. The Bible put it a different way. It's called, what is it called? The unforgivable sin? Lying to the Holy Spirit? Something like that? So, yeah, but what is that? It's blasphemy. blasphemy. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Well, that's just lying. Blasphemy. What is blasphemy? Speaking what is untrue. If it's the truth, how could it be blasphemy? 
See, if God is dogs, spelled backwards, then there's nothing to get upset about. He's watching this thing, this trailer for The Sopranos. It's Tony Soprano's kid says, and he's talking to his parents, and he says something. They said, God forbid. He goes, there is no God. He said, shut your mouth. If there is no God, what's the problem? If there is a God, what's the problem if somebody thinks there isn't one? There's no problem. The problem happens when we have a goal. That's when there's a problem. If your goal is to be getting up moving, anything keeps you from your goal is resistance then. But just sitting there, well, the chair is resisting you. That's how come you're sitting there and not lying on the floor. But if you were lying on the floor, then the floor would be resisting you. We can't live without resistance. It's what we do with it that matters. Think about how lightly you take lying, how easily you lie. Think about how easily you lie to me. Think about your different kinds of lying to me. There's a direct, I ask you a direct question and you lie. You'll call that a lie. I ask an indirect question of the group and you don't answer. You won't call that a lie. I ask you an indirect question and you answer in an indirect way. You won't call that a lie. Yet, it gets you to the same place. So whether you got here by walking, by driving your car, by having someone else drive you, by riding a bicycle, or you parachuted in, doesn't matter. That you're here is what matters. We take lying so lightly because we love ourselves above all else. The second body cannot grow if you're a persistent liar, always justifying yourself. Lying makes wrong psychological connections inside of you. Wrong psychological connections are like birth defects in a physical body. It's just that simple. How can you build a second body by making wrong connections? Well, the hip bone's supposed to be connected to the leg bone, but you got it connected to the collarbone. That's a wrong connection. Your body's not going to work properly. We're already in a body that doesn't work properly. We need to get the psychological connections corrected so that it can begin to develop properly, so that it can convey us properly when we want to be conveyed. Internally considering all day long will enable you to lose force and build a deformed psychological body, your second body, just in the same way as children who are poisoned in the womb through alcohol or drugs or whatever, are born with birth defects. It's that certain. Everything that happens in life will cause inner resentment, inner resistance, and loss of force when you internally consider. You'll be identified with everything in life. You'll be unable to make that inner isolation that we talked about last week. Just in case anyone remembers what we talked about last week, it was isolation. We have to be isolated from life without isolating ourselves from people and relationships. Oh, you're giving me a headache again. Yeah. I'm not giving you a headache. It's your resistance to the truth that's giving you the headache. I'm just the convenient target for you to use to not take responsibility for what's going on inside of yourself. A person who thinks he's neglected, badly treated, will reside in a state of internal considering will float around in a pool of self-made poison with a straw sipping every now and again. Or sipping a lot. Or sometimes they just stick their head under and breathe. One may pretend one is tough and doesn't mind, but this is a picture of oneself behind which is internal considering. A hard crust is formed toward people. Some of us who have formed a hard crust toward people. We don't care They're what they do. It doesn't matter. It's a lie. It is the picture that needs to be dissolved. It's the picture of oneself that needs to be dissolved. That picture, oh, I don't. That, what they do doesn't touch me. I don't care. I don't care. But they, they, they mean nothing. It doesn't mean a thing. They don't mean anything to me. They're just igmos. They don't mean a thing to me. It's a lie. In this work, it's a lie. And it must be dissolved. You don't dissolve it. You can't do this work. Not only does that picture have to be dissolved, it has to be replaced by understanding. <sighs> now you've gone from preaching to meddling. Now I can't just dissolve it. Now I've got to understand these igmos. I don't think I like this too much. Well, as you begin to understand it, you will. You know, we've got to learn to argue with ourselves. We go far too easily with internal eyes that lead us down inside ourselves. There's no argument. Somebody comes along and they say, you've got to, uh, you got to start reaching out to these people. You've got to start canceling your accounts and forgiving them and loving them and doing things for them. And you say, I don't see it that way. And I say, oh, which I doesn't see it that way? 
You need to start arguing with that little eye. Because that little eye means you're no good. That little eye is out to kill you. Start arguing with it. Start struggling with it. Don't go so easily with those little eyes. Somebody comes and tells you something, the last thing you want to say is, I don't see it that way. Trust me on this. Patty just had this experience. She's got this panic attack going on. She says to her husband, I'm having a heart attack. Call 911. He says, Patty, not a heart attack. It's just a panic attack. You've had these before. It's the same thing. No, this is different. Patty, I'm standing out here looking at it. Trust me, it's the same thing. I don't see it that way. Call 911. Okay. And boy, I'll tell you what, 12 hours later, when she finally got home, after submitting herself to 911, after having her life taken out of her hands, after throwing herself in the middle of the machinery, tying herself to the wheel, and going around and around and crunch, crunch, poke, poke, oh, oh, here and there, she said, I don't want this. I want to be off this machine. I want to go home now. And they said, sorry, you've got to go here now. But I'm okay. Sorry, you've got to do this now. You can't go home. You are not released. Part of the machine. How'd that feel? That was awful. It was awful. Good. I hope it was awful enough that you never want to do it again. Unfortunately, our memories are very short, and it won't be long before we want to do it again. We've got to learn to argue with ourselves. Which I? If you cannot observe yourself, you cannot argue with yourself. If you're not arguing with yourself, you're not observing yourself. Are you arguing with yourself? Good. Then you're observing yourself. If you're observing yourself, you're going to argue with yourself because you know that you're wrong. You know what kind of a person you are. You know you can be counted on to do. You know how difficult you are. And you know you shouldn't be that way. So you need to start arguing with yourself when you are that way. If you don't do that, who's going to do it? You won't listen to your husband, you won't listen to your teacher, you won't listen to your wife, you won't listen to the people sent to you by his endlessness to tell you what you need to do. Who are you going to listen to? I'm going to listen to the little eyes. Okay. You need to learn to go with better eyes. You wouldn't allow someone to enter your home and do harm to your family without a struggle. Yet you'll allow little eyes to do it to you internally thinking that they are you and there's no help for it because you're right. It's your only course of action. What else could you do? Your lack of a well-organized second body is the cause of the troubles in your life. Let me say this again because this is a difficult one for us to get. Your lack of an organized second body is the cause of the troubles in your life. Not the people in your life. Not you don't have enough of this or enough of that. It's your lack of a well-organized second body. Your second body is not well-organized. It's a mess. It takes everything wrong. It takes impressions. They fall on negative things. Next thing you know, you're in a negative state. Negative states always lead to bad things for you. But you're in it, and not only that, you start justifying it. It's like a motorboat on the lake of fire. Oh, we're having fun now! To build up such a body, a well-organized second body, we must live the work in ourselves. Learn from what we must separate against what we must struggle. Learn with what we must not identify. Well, well, I know all that stuff. No, you don't. You cannot trust those little eyes in you. you got to have the work to guide you until you can make a connection with something real inside of yourself. Well, I've made a connection with something real inside of myself. Okay, you're right. There's really no reason for you to be here. I have nothing to teach you. All negative states do us harm. If our negative inner states are allowed to express without hindrance, without self-observation, we are lepers suffering from terrible internal diseases. Everything that comes into us is touched by those negative states and made unclean. Negative states are as contagious as contagious leprosy, and they eat us alive. You know what leprosy is? Actually, the greatest harm of these negative states is that they cut us off from the help of higher centers. That's just the saddest of it all, that the very thing that we have embraced is the very thing that cuts us off from the help that we say we want. Maurice Nicole said, The thunderstorms of our negative emotions render reception impossible. I like that. The thunderstorms of our negative emotions render reception impossible. So here... The higher centers are trying to give us what it is we need 
to nourish us, to raise us up, to help us to build a well-organized second body. But the thunderstorms of our negative states make reception impossible. Have you seen your negative states? Are you aware of them? You can't begin to work on anything inside if you can't observe it. All negative states eat you like leprosy. If you could see this, you would not spend so much time in negative states. You would not spend so much time justifying them. If you noticed how much time you spend justifying your negative states, if you knew what they were doing, you wouldn't. If you knew the acid they are to you, you would not be swimming in it. You must come to understand in this work, you have no right to be negative and no excuse for it. In this work, you have no right to be negative and there's no excuse for it. If you have a right to be negative and you have excuse for it, you're not in this work. You're in life. But I come to the meetings, I read the books, I listen to the lectures, I meditate. If you are negative and you have an excuse for it, you are not in this work. I don't care if you meditate 24 hours a day. I don't care if you read the books 24 hours a day while you're meditating. I don't care if you read the books, meditate, and listen to the lectures 24 hours a day, and then eat the books afterwards. You are not in this work if you are justifying your negative states with some excuse. You're in life. Gurdjieff said, in this work, we have good leather to sell for people who wish to walk, but people must make their own shoes out of this leather for themselves. You don't wish to walk, walk on out of here, because there's nothing here that can help you because you have to want help. If you want to be right more than you want help, you'll get what you want.